Hey guys, what's happening? Hope you're having a great day. Thanks for watching, coming back, subscribing, liking, sharing, commenting, all that stuff. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm gonna quit pointing at you because it feels kind of rude. So hey, um, I'm working on a photo, surprise, and uh, I'm in Luminar, another surprise. And anyway, it's a night shot from New York City that took about a year ago. I used to not even like New York City, and if you've watched any of my videos, you know how much I love cityscapes and street scenes and all that kind of the urban landscape, if you will. And yet, I didn't like New York City. Really weird. I don't know why, but um, I used to go up there and not really enjoy taking photos for some crazy reason. But over the last few years, my opinion of the place has changed dramatically, and I absolutely adore it now. It's, it's a great city. So anyway, all that aside, um, one of the things I like a lot about shooting in cities is those gritty kind of scenes, especially at night. Um, and New York's great for this because there's so many neon signs and lights and things like that that you can just get these fascinating, I think, uh, urban landscapes or cityscapes that are just rich with detail and color and all the stuff that really makes photography fun for me. So that's the kind of shot I have and I'm going to kind of grit it up a little bit. I always do this when I'm talking about grit and structure and detail. I don't know why. It just makes me want to clench my fist because I'm like, yeah, you know. Anyway, um, let's jump into the photo and I'll quit my hand. Well, I probably won't. I talk in my hands a lot. But anyway, let's jump into the photo. So here we go. Let's see, I use the hands again. Um, here's the shot. Uh, so um, it started life like that. And that's one of the things I find in cities at night when you're shooting is great lights and all that stuff, but everything's yellow and kind of this yellow green, which honestly is just ugly. I just don't like the color at all. So I turned it into this because that's more to my liking. Um, it's a little bit Blade Runner-esque, not really. It's a little too bright and vibrant for a Blade Runner kind of look, but it's kind of that urban gritty kind of a uh, look. Anyway, um, I'm gonna jump into the uh, workflow and show you how I got here. Quick, easy, lots of fun, let's go. Okay, so here it is after just the develop filter. As you know, I can't turn that one off. Uh, so there it is before and after. So as you can see, I changed the temperature, I did a little bit of contrast, a little bit of highlights work and some clarity. Kind of your simple, basic, straightforward adjustments just to kind of get the ball rolling. Uh, and I pretty much always start with the develop filter. Um, in the beginning of getting Luminar 18, I didn't really use it a lot, but I've come to really love it. It's a powerful filter, it does a lot for you. To be clear, I edit raw files when I'm doing my real shots. Uh, real shots. Uh, this was a JPEG that I brought into Luminar. I use, usually, not always, but usually um, use JPEGs in my images just because they're a little smaller and snappier. Uh, so it says develop, not raw develop, in case anybody's wondering. Um, the things that I think about for me are the same things I really think about in any photo, and that's light, detail, and color. Um, I don't normally spend a lot of time on detail because I don't bring them up a lot of my photos. However, uh, in a scene like this, I do want to accentuate it because it is kind of a gritty scene. Uh, New York's beautiful and lovely and all that, but it's gritty to me, and all cities are in some way, and there's a lot of things that have some cool details that you can accentuate, so I like to bring that up. So I think about light, detail, color, but I also think about lines. Um, and again, that's prob not probably, that is something I think about every photo, every time I'm taking a photo is, what are the lines, what are the angles, where's the viewer's attention gonna be drawn in the photo? And I try to internalize things and make them sort of automatic. I don't succeed every time. I take tons of photos that suck. Um, so I'm not trying to sound preachy. If I do, I apologize. Um, I'm just speaking about how I try to think about things. Sometimes I succeed and I get home and I have a photo like this one that I happen to like, and then I have plenty I get home and I'm like, what was I doing? What a, what a stupid shot. So I don't share those. Um, so you think my, uh, my hit rate's 100%. It ain't. Not even close. Um, okay, next was tone. So a little smart tone and some other stuff you can kind of see here. It was kind of massaging the light a little bit. I'll often do develop and then tone back to back because... Uh, in some ways, they play off of each other a little bit. Like when I add contrast and develop, I'll often need to come back and add smart tone in the tone filter to sort of uh, overcome some of the darkness that uh, contrast may have added. But here's a little something that you don't use a lot in cities, and that's polarizing filter. Um, it's great at like cutting through the glare and crisping up the blues in like a blue sky in the afternoon if you're in the park or whatever. But it works really well on things like this. So there's the before and the after with the polarizing filter really had a nice impact, so um, I like that one. Um, here's structure, and this is about it for detail for me. I kind of prefer structure over really anything else in Luminar, and boom, there I went, and I went kind of heavy-handed. I mean, 38's not a ton on a lot of filters, but on structure, it's a fair amount, um, but it's a gritty city. I really want to bring up the details in the uh, street and in the buildings and stuff, so 
Um, I wasn't really worried about noise. I mean, I shot it at f 3.2, ISO 1600, handheld, quick snap. Um, but still, it's, um, I think it's fine to just crank up a little bit of the structure across the whole thing. I'm going to do some other things that are going to sort of counterbalance that, so I'm, I'm not really worried about it. Um, here's a little pop of saturation. This is New York. There's uh, neon lights and signs and everything, and color to me just makes it come alive, and that's just how I live. So um, that's what I did. And next is color balance. So take a look at the photo now, and then I'm going to turn on color balance, and boom, very different, right? Much more blue, and that's what I like about color balance. It helps me get rid of that yellowy kind of green look that's it's all over the street. It's kind of in the buildings and stuff, and now it's more blue and kind of pink. It basically goes from a warm kind of blah tone overall to more of a cooler, to me, more interesting tone. Uh, and, and this is what I like about color balance. In this one, I went more to the blues in the shadows and in the mid-tones. Um, however, um, and a little bit toward the magenta in the mid-tones as well, which is helping me with a lot of the reflection of those red lights on the, uh, on the street and stuff. But in the highlights, I went a little bit warmer. And that was just, um, there's before and after just a nice overall subtle color change to me just is just more attractive right night scenes to me just mentally should be cooler because it's night and therefore it's dark and darker tones kind of are cooler and more blue so that's just kind of why i did that and the last thing on this layer was just dodge and burn so here i went to the two upper corners and i darkened them so that's this upper left corner where it says capizio that sign with that model kicking his leg or whatever i darkened that a little bit so it was just too bright I also darkened that upper right corner where all those lights are. And then I did a little dodge and burn on the lady who's in the center. She's kind of the subject of the photo, um, but uh, I brightened her a little bit. So let me show you a dodge and burn before. Look at the two corners and look at the girl, right? So before and after, or sorry, that was the other way around. Um, now it's before. They're, the two corners are brighter. The girl's a little darker, and now it's reversed, right? The two corners are now darker and the girl's a bit brighter. So it's just a little bit of dodge and burn. I wanted to bring a little attention to her. She's where I focused. I shot it straight down the middle. And for me, there's so many lines kind of converging in that direction. On the left-hand side here, you kind of have the uh, walkway and the edge of the building kind of aiming towards the center of the photo. In the middle, you have her and the lamppost and that like line there in the center kind of heading that way. And on the right-hand side, you have uh, the street and, and the, those lines are all converging kind of in the center of the photograph. I kind of like that she's walking in the middle of the street and yet the hand is up and it's a red light and it says stop, don't walk. Typical New York. They're like, the hell with the you know cars, I'm walking. So um, that's where we are so far. Now I went and added another layer and let me turn that layer on. I always forget that. And in this case I added tone and, oops, I uh, just turned that off. Um, they're already on. So tone, structure, and clarity. And what I did is I applied them um, in, you know, not generous, but in a fair amount, but then I applied them in a radial mask and I did it just in the center. So what I wanted to do, and this is part of what I'm talking about, drawing the viewer's attention. I just wanted to drive the attention kind of to the center of the photo because, you know, you might go over there and say, well, there's a drugstore, Dwayne Reed. Ooh, Stranger Things. Cool. What a great show. I like it when they flip the van. Love that show. So cool. Go kids. It's like the Goonies, but better. Um, and I love the Goonies. Um, and on the left side, you see the Stardust Diner sign. You see people actually waiting to cross the scene. So I kind of want to draw more of the attention to the center, which is the mo not the model. She's not a model. She's just some lady walking with the bag. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, anyway, I just want to drive the attention there. So I just took up the tone, the structure, and the clarity in the center, and then stuck it in with a radial mask so it just applies in that center area. It's a subtle change. I think it helps, uh, but I'm not done. And the last thing to do here is, of course, uh, I'm going to add a vignette. And so... That's going to help me draw your attention more to the center as well. Now here I did more of a, a rectangular vignette. So I went uh, really to the left with roundness, which makes it more rectangular. So what I'm trying to do is cover those outer edges. So if you go like that, um, oops, uh, no, if you go like, yeah, if you go like that and that, you can see you can almost make a frame out of it. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go back where I was, which I think was about 70. And this was maybe in the 60s or something. So... All I'm trying to do is just, again, drive your attention to the center of the photograph. Usually it's kind of um, easy to draw attention to the center of the photograph. This is particularly busy on both sides, and so I kind of want to dry, draw, uh, drive your eye that way. I don't know if I succeeded. I mean, I'm, I'm trying. Uh, you never know, right, until you get it and look at it. 
Uh, and then the last thing is soft focus, and that is really, it's a wonderful filter. I, I, like, I like to use it. I use it in a recent video as well. But basically, it creates a little bit of a glow, uh, but it also creates, as the name implies, a softer focus. So I'm sort of removing a little bit of detail on the outer edges, and all I did is I applied that also in the center of the photograph with a radial mask. And so when you add a radial mask, it'll default to affecting the stuff outside. And so on the previous layer, when I did the inside of that, all I did is I applied a radial mask and then I had to hit the invert button. In this case, I'm not gonna invert it. If you wanted to invert it, you would just do that there, right? But I'm not doing that. I wanted to leave it outside and that's where I want the soft focus to apply. So you could uh, change the brightness if you wanted, like that, I don't really want to. I, I like it a little bit darkish. Um, and you can increase the amount. Um, you can see that creates a little bit moodier, a little bit dreamier feel, and a little blur. In fact, I think I kind of like it better uh, with more uh, because it softens up all those other areas and the inside is still crisp. Two reasons why. Number one, um, I didn't touch it because of the radial mask. And number two, because that previous adjustment layer that I had before this one, I increased the structure and clarity and tone in the center of the photograph. So I think I'll leave it like that. And by the way, I use Soft Focus 2 instead of Soft Focus 1. The difference being, that's one, it's a little bit brighter. And I went with two because it's a little bit darker. So now the edges are a little bit softer and blurrier. And so I think the way the human eye works is if it's not really in focus, you might kind of scratch your eyes and say, wait, that's, that's not really clear. Um, and then you're drawn to the stuff that's clear, right? So that's kind of what I'm trying to do. I don't know if it works. That's just kind of how I think. But there's the before, everything's pretty much in focus and the after, a little bit more crisp focus on the center of the photograph and a little blurrier on the edges. And by the way, I cropped the photo. I should have started with that, but I forgot. So um, it's a 16 by nine crop, which I just adore these days. I'm so into that. Um, but I cropped out a little bit of the top of that photo and I cropped a little bit of the sidewalk as well because I felt like that was enough. Um, I didn't need all that extra stuff. And in fact, I might would go back to dodge and burn and darken some of this billboard and that sign right there. I think that would be a good thing to do. I'm just now seeing that. And so that's another thing. I mean, I edit my photos and I spend all this time making videos and editing photos. And then I'll look at them like 10 minutes later or 10 days later and think, you know, God, how did I miss that, right? So um, everybody misses stuff, we all do. And uh, so that's part of the fun of photography. You gotta go back and do it later. So that's it, my friends, one more time. There's a before and after. That's a, a few tips for uh, editing some sort of like gritty, see there I go again with the fist, gritty cityscapes at night and trying to draw the uh, viewer's attention. That's how it works. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in, come back soon and adios.